The president has been very clear that he intends to run again, and if he does, I will be running with him. In fact, I'm going to share with you a very simple story, which is that I went home one day and I said, well, what's, why are conservatives bad, Mommy? Because I thought we were supposed to conserve things. <laughs> I couldn't reconcile it. Now I can. <laughs> Um, I mean, one of the young leaders was talking to me about climate mental health. I said, tell me what's going on with your peers. Climate mental health. And she talked, I said, I think I understand that, but unpack it for me. And she talked about how her peers are thinking about it. One example is, you know, whether when they're ready, could they start a family? Worried about what that would mean. And the stress of it, they were talking about it in terms of their peers, trying to figure out, you know, they're going to have to get a job and they're going to have to make a living, but what can they do and how can they adapt the education that they're having now to their activism? All right, guys, so it must be a slow news day for The View because they're just picking up on some drama that has been going on between the Democrats for a long time now, in which the Democrats are allegedly dissatisfied with Kamala, okay? They're satisfied with Biden who I, I believe is going to be, what, 82, right, when uh, he's up for re-election. Uh, but they are dissatisfied with Kamala, okay? Uh, there's some rumblings from the Democrats that they want to replace her as VP, okay? That she should not be on the Biden 2024 ticket. Now, The View is going to discuss this, and it should come as no surprise that some of the analysts on The View uh, are going to have a racial takeaway from this that this is some type of racial sexist bigotry towards kamala harris and none of us should be surprised okay um so without further ado i want to go ahead and react to this because i think this conversation is actually pretty interesting <laughs> democratic leaders are reportedly frustrated over the lack of support for vice president kamala harris now it's apparently led to a rift between the vp and senator elizabeth warren uh after she responded to some question about endorsing Biden and Harris ticket in 2024. Here's what she said. Claire. Should Kamala Harris be the, his choice the second time around? You know, I, I really want to defer to what makes Biden comfortable on his team. I've known Kamala for a long time. I like Kamala. I knew her back when she was when she was an attorney general and I was still uh, uh, teaching and we worked on the housing crisis together. So we go way back, but they need they have to be a team. And my sense is they are. I don't mean that by <laughs> suggesting I think there are any problems. I think they are. Yeah, she definitely thinks there's problems. Right. And these people know. Right. She, she's saying out loud what is actually going on and she caught herself. But yeah, um, the reports are that Kamala is not happy with the assignments that Joe Biden has given her, right? Like, for example, the border. She doesn't like that, okay? She feels like she, uh, Biden has given her impossible assignments, and that has created a rift between the two, okay? Apparently, behind closed doors, they're not getting along very well at all. And Elizabeth Warren is basically saying that, and she caught herself basically admitting to that. Like, yeah, I don't think that she should be on the ticket because they really don't get along that well, right? I mean, that's basically what she's saying, Um so let's go get, let's go further here. Uh-huh. Listen. So wait, well, hold on. She clarified later on that she fully endorses a Biden Harris ticket and didn't mean to imply otherwise. But insiders, now I love an insider. <laughs> insider says Harris feels insulted about it. Does the party need to get on the same page? What is happening? I don't know what the hell is wrong with Democrats. Listen, here's the bottom line, guys. <laughs> Joe Biden's going to be your nominee. Stop talking about how old he is. And Kamala Harris is going to be your vice president. So stop fretting, stop wringing your hands, and get behind your ticket because on the other side, your alternative is Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. Bruh, why is Anna Navarro still a Republican? Right? <laughs> why are you a, a concern? Why do you call yourself a conservative at this point? I don't really understand it. I really don't understand why you keep doing that. When you're openly rooting for Democrats, it doesn't matter who the Republican nominee is, okay? Uh, the people that don't like Trump, which are very few in the Republican Party, but it is some people, okay? Uh, it's probably more people than you think. Uh, they're definitely on Team DeSantis, right? And the very, very, very small minority of Republicans are team like, you know, Paul Ryan, right? Uh, those type of Republicans, okay? Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm not sure if there's a place in the Republican Party or conservative movement 
for people like Anna Navarro, who openly cheers on Democrats, and she just will not accept any GOP nominee, it, so it seems, right? Again, I really don't understand this. So you tell me what you prefer. And I, you know, I, I, I love this. I love that they said in this story, I don't know if it's true, that Kamala is not, that uh, Madam Vice President is not responding to the calls from Senator Warren. Go yeah, so she's salty, right? She's mad and she's upset. So the insiders are right. You're admitting that the insiders, what they're saying is, is, is true, right? That she's not responding. Uh, she's upset. She's mad because Democrats don't really want her like that. Good. If they are going to be doing this, don't show up to fundraise for them. Don't show up to campaign for them. Don't pick up their phone calls. Get with the program. Listen, you know what they're doing? They're playing right into the hands of Fox News. Yeah. Yeah. Fox News every single day goes after Kamala Harris, trying to portray her as inept and some kind of bumbling fool. She, she's not. No, she is. <laughs> right? If you ever listen to her talk, she is. Okay, She's nothing but word salad <laughs> and platitudes. That's it. There's no substance from Kamala ever. Okay. Uh, again, you would think that Anna Navarro would be aware of this. Okay. But she's not because, again, she's Teen Democrat at this point. That's not who she is. And so Democrats have got to come out and reinforce Kamala. They've got to stop playing into the hands of these people who cannot stand that she is the first woman, the first woman of color. Here we go. Here we go. It's because she's black. Okay. The hate against her is because of her skin color the criticism of kamala harris is because of her skin color these people have nothing else okay it's always the skin color or they have a vagina right or, or who they like to sleep with or whether or not they like their genitalia it's always that right you can't criticize any of these people without being some type of bigot right it's hilarious Vice President, and don't want her but, to succeed. And by the way, her her I, husband is great too. I have to say though, I, yeah, great to Jill Biden. <laughs> He's great to Jill Biden. I'm a little surprised. I mean, she when she was announced as the VP, I was like, it's all over. She's so, so accomplished, highly qualified. I'm a little struck by the lack of accomplishments in the policy portfolios she's been given. The border is a big one. It's not a win. No one's going to win. We haven't done major in border security or immigration reform since the Bush administration. But she is tasked with overseeing it, and the border crisis keeps getting worse. And I feel like the Biden West Wing isn't necessarily setting her up for success by giving her things that she can go out and champion. At a time when voters, I get the age, like age is not the most important thing, but you are, if you're electing someone who's an 82-year-old in 2024, you need to believe that the vice president is able and willing the next day to be the president. And I think there's some concern about just the lack of a policy accomplishments that she's made as vice I'm, president. I'm Facts. Facts. Low key, what uh, Alyssa Farrah Griffin is saying here, and she's basically a Democrat too at this point. But what she's saying here is, is, is true, right? The main concern for the Democrats when it comes to Kamala Harris is the fact that Joe Biden's old. So you cannot not have this conversation about Joe Biden's age because he's getting up there in age where it's like, you know, he could, he could, you know, <laughs> expire at any time, right? I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, he's 82 years old. At that age, people just wake up one day and they're dead, right? And, and that could be a possibility considering that Joe Biden is so old. So again, next, who's next in line or who's next in line after that is really important. Right. It is extremely important. And I just don't know if most people feel like Kamala Harris is somebody that could lead this country. I'm still trying to figure out how most people think that Biden can lead this country. Right. Allegedly, that's what they think. Uh, but Kamala, again, I, I think is just as bad, if not worse than Biden. Right. Um, so it is important. And I think that there should be conversations about replacing uh, Kamala Harris as VP because she just hasn't been that impressive. Okay, she hasn't done anything. She hasn't accomplished anything. So, I mean, why should she continue to be vice president when she's weighing down a ticket, <laughs> right? I'm surprised that there's concern. I think it has a lot to do with this. She's a black woman. Oh, here we go, <laughs> right? Democrats racist too, apparently, right? Democrats are racist. Everybody's racist. Any criticism of a so-called black woman, and she's Indian too, by the way, uh, any criticism of her is, is, is racist, right? It, it, or any criticism of her comes from a place of racism. This is the level of analysis that comes from the view, right? This is the level of analysis from these people. This is where they get paid millions of dollars to say. Black women get everything done. We've saved this country's democracy for She's obviously for amazing, but what specifically? But, well, 
Like, no, I mean, where, should I, where, where shall I start? I mean, she was in the Senate, of but course. But no, I mean, as Vice General, President, of course, Vice she's President, highly. She's, she, the Inflation Reduction Act. I she, she had nothing to do with that, right? She had nothing to do with the Inflation Reduction Act, so it, that, that's not a, a thing. I mean, she was the face of did. Roe v. Wade. I mean, face of Roe v. Wade, <laughs> right? What, what does that mean? What does that mean? She was the face of Roe v. Wade. What does that mean? Roe v. Wade got overturned, <laughs> so that means she failed. She was also in charge of trying to get through um, the Democrats' um, Voting Rights Act. That failed, <laughs> right? Now, again, none of those things would have been a good thing, but I'm just saying, everything she's been assigned to from a policy perspective has been a disaster or it's failed. So what has she done? She doesn't have anything. She doesn't know anything, right? She doesn't know anything at all. That's why she started with, well, when Kamala was in the Senate, well, it's not about when she was in the Senate. What has she accomplished as vice president? What has she done? They don't have anything. No, the list goes on and on. I'd like to ask you, what, what, did, Operation what did Pence do? What did Pence do? What did Pence do? He put his lips firmly on the butt of Donald Trump and, and still is fighting a subpoena to testify against Trump. I mean, when Pence finds the cojones to do something, then I think we can okay, talk can about a vice presidential... It does feel a little... Uh, like, you know, get in there. Okay, so you know what's funny about that? Her bringing up Mike Pence? Because... Mike Pence, <laughs> again, according to them, okay, this is not my argument. I'm just saying, according to them, according to the liberals, Mike H Pence is supposed to be a hero, right? Because he decided uh, on January 6th to uh, not send the election back to the states, right? Uh, which, again, a lot of people were pissed off at Mike Pence about, okay? They say he's a traitor, okay? They called him Judas because of that. So um, that in and of itself, if you want to count that as an accomplishment, right, which, again, the liberal media should if they're being consistent about it, right? Uh, not succumbing to the pressure from the president and basically all of conservatives, right? Um, then he's definitely accomplished a lot more than Kamala has, right? With that that one thing, okay? I'm just saying. It's funny to me how these people want to cry racism and bigotry as for reasons why people don't like Kamala. But when asked to explain, well, what has Kamala done, right, that the people should like, they don't have anything, right? They have nothing. Again, it's almost as if Kamala hasn't done much, and because she hasn't done much, and she just doesn't come off as a very likable person, she doesn't seem to be very knowledgeable uh, or, you know, adept on the subject matter that she's been assigned to. Um, yeah, people just don't like her. She's just not an oppressive politician at all, okay? And, and that's just the reality of the situation. But again, you can't tell the wokes that because, again, everything is racism, sexism, some form of bigotry. Um, if you got criticism for somebody that happens to be uh, a so-called person of color and liberal or Democrat. So let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.